Hello, I'm Ashley Davis Bush, and I'd like to talk to you today about conflict. Conflict is inevitable in all human relationships. Conflict can happen with your children, with your spouse, with your friends, with your boss, with your colleagues, with your parents. It's basically a part of human nature. Now, when I say conflict, I'm talking about basic disagreements, uh, possible misunderstandings, all the way to really um, some fiery disagreements or getting your feelings hurt. But the misconception about conflict is that it always has to be heated, it always has to be activated, it always has to be dramatic, which it doesn't. So we're going to be talking today about healthy ways to have conflict. Because if you believe that conflict is always going to end in a basic eruption of drama, you might want to avoid it. In fact, many people avoid conflict at all costs. But the danger to that is that it eventually erodes intimacy in relationships when you're chronically avoiding conflict. It can actually help people grow apart or cause people to grow apart. So it's important to understand how can you have healthy conflict? How can you reframe it so that it's actually a way to get closer, a way to understand each other better, a way to actually build ground so that you have a stronger relationship? So I'd like to share three thoughts about that, primarily ge geared towards couples in conflict because often as a primary relationship that's where conflict disagreements tend to show up. So the first point is to listen. Now that can be really hard when you're having a disagreement because you want to get your point across. But the directive here is to actually listen as much as, if not more so, than speaking. And a way to, to really anchor that into concreteness is to use the phrase, what I hear you saying is, and then paraphrase what that person is saying. And then at the end of that say, did I get that right? This is based on a Harville Hendricks inspired, um, what he calls an intentional dialogue from Imago Relationship Therapy. And it's really a technique to learn how to listen. So you, again, just to repeat, you say, what I hear you saying is, then you say it, did I get that right? And if you didn't, then you try again until you really understand the essence of what they are trying to say. Secondly, use I statements. When you're having disagreements, it's very easy to say, you did this, you did that, you were this, you were that. And again, that can start to escalate uh, the drama of a conflict. If you use I statements, it keeps it very centered on yourself. I feel this, I did that, I realize I contributed to it in this way, I need this. So again, sticking with I statements. Lastly, a tip for having conflicts go more smoothly so that you can have it be a positive experience is that if you are getting too activated and you are starting to feel your heart race, your voice is getting louder, your voice is getting, um, you're starting to speak more quickly, if you're starting to go into what I call a code red, which means your amygdala, the alarm bells in your brain have signaled fight or flight or freeze, then it's time to exit the situation. Because at that point, really nothing good can happen. And in fact, it's probably going to go bad really quickly. You don't want to get in a position where you're saying things you don't mean, you're starting to yell, you're starting to name call. That's just uh, unfair fighting and it's bad news. So at that point, you want to exit the situation. You want to say, I need to cool down. I've gotten my tempers up. I'm too activated. I need half an hour and you exit the premises or you leave the room. Uh, you may need an hour, you may need the rest of the night, you may have to say this is really important but I can't discuss it right now because I'm too activated, let's talk about it tomorrow. And when you leave or exit, you want to find a way to calm yourself down and two really good ways to do that are to do deep belly breathing, that's one way, and a second way is to put cold water on your wrists and on your neck, particularly the back of your neck. That will help literally cool you down so that the next time you have a conversation, i.e. conflict, you can do it in a way where your partner feels heard, you feel heard, and you bridge your way back to a deeper understanding of each other. When disagreements go that way, you will have a happier and healthier relationship. Best of luck.